Hello and welcome to another episode of Talking Balls. Um, I am your host, Neil Adams. Um, as always, I'm joined by Mark McFadgen and Robert Newman, my lovely bearded co-hosts. How are you guys? It's happening, guys. Absolutely <laughs> fantastic, mate. If it wasn't for the fact that an alarm was going off and work for hours, I would be in an absolutely brilliant mood. <laughs> absolutely fantastic mood, yeah. I was on the phone to Mark earlier and it was, I will admit, it was very annoying. Was that um, that consistent fire alarm that happens from time to time? No, no, mate. So, yeah. Someone had damaged the fire call point and I had to listen to it until it, it, an engineer came out to fix it. How many hours? Three. Oh. Um, <laughs> right. As you'll probably see, this is called the Jeff Reinbold episode, but yet we are without Jeff. Um, we are. Jeff will probably maybe join us soon, I'm hoping, but. We couldn't wait any longer. We don't know where where he's gone. What's happening? Maybe uh, we are Jeffless. We are Jeffless <laughs> at the minute. We hope to be Jeff full. Jeffified. Uh, I think we skip real quick and move on to something else. <laughs> I don't know if I like that. <laughs> Jeffified. That Jeffified sounds awesome. I think Black Eye has a really good one. Um, hopefully he joins us soon, um, and we'll talk about a balls with uh, Jeff. Um, but before he gets on. Um, we're just going to talk about our fantasy, talk a bit about NFL, talk about the games, um, talk a bit about how I'm playing Rob this week and I am going to beat him. And I'm going to talk about the fact that I want to get this bet what on bet? air, on our stream. I know a wee bet you should do. What's that mate? Is, see, we're, we're obviously going to be doing a wee uh, podcast next week after mm-hmm. said game has taken place. Yeah. So, I mean, loser wears a tutu on the stream. <laughs> it's not the same though, I'm no sitting down. No one's going to see a tutu. No one's going to see it. Uh, what is your obsession with tutus? Well, I you just have a fine collection, okay? <laughs> and you want to wear one? You're not involved, so how are you going to wear it? Well, you know what, I can feel bad for you and do the forfeit as well. Well, we could just do the least of points. <laughs> you just between... do the forfeit force. We could do the least amount of that. points between the three of us. Loser, the loser, Mark, has to wear a tutu. That's, that's, that's the loser mark. <laughs> no, but simple simple bet, Neil. Create a beer. Winner gets a create a beer, loser buys it. Deal? Jesus. Winner gets a create a beer and the loser buys it? Yeah, obviously, between me and you. Yeah, so they thought that would have been obvious, which I didn't know why you had to explain who you had you to buy. Just because the loser has the to buy all the crates. <laughs> all the crates. <laughs> Yeah. For, oh, I was going to say for Super Bowl, the next Super Bowl Sunday, or not Super Bowl Sunday, Game Sunday. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> who are you playing, Mark? I am against DJ Charknado. That is. Who's that? That's Mary, isn't it? James. 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 Mm. And are you protected to win? Um, predicted to lose by a single point. I am predicted to lose by three points, and I don't think it's going to happen at all. I do. Uh, I mean, <laughs> well, if, if last year was anything to go by. I to be fair, you do have a good team, to be honest. Although Nico Collins is a bit of a fucking stupid shit. Who are you talking? Are you talking about my team? No, Rob. Me? So. Yeah, no, that was a panic one, if you remember. Yeah. Like that was a. Was that was in the defense. It could have been yeah. to be fair, but no, I was flicking through and uh, I got like I had like five seconds left, and I just picked the top receiver that was available at that time. So and I was a panic. I was a panic pick. Why is Jackson Smith Nujigba not on? Because he's questionable at the minute. So. Because you're going through protected points, aren't you? No, no, he's questionable. Look, he might be injured. I don't know yet. Uh, Another maybe. questionable though is Leonard Fournette. Yeah, he doesn't have still, a team, bro. Still not signed. Yeah, I know that might be a bad choice in my about my behalf, but we'll see. I'm yeah, trying to check. It, it, New Orleans. Orleans. How, how, New Orleans? Many seri- how many serious running backs do you have, Neil? There's four there. Neil, we bonds. That's what I'm saying. This we this is going to be so easy for me, like. See, to be fair, and you've got D. Jones on the bench, which gets you the three points you need, and then that running back, Jackson, would get you another five or four points. So, our three points. So you... Yeah. I'm glad you don't go over predicted sometimes, you know. 
I mean, I don't go with ever for predicted like the main five is more predicted than I would start. See, what do you call him? Daniel Jones over Aaron Rodgers? Um, when I would have your man that I, I don't even think is even going to start, uh, Deion Jackson, he's predicted to get 12 points, and I don't even have him on yet because I'm waiting yeah. to see if he's actually going to start. I'm just hoping George Kittle, that Q disappears to be fair. Rob, I was just looking into uh, Fournette to see if like anybody had thought about picking him up. And his mm -hmm. overview says that New England was hosting him for a workout on Wednesday, the 19th of July. So I take it that went fucking nowhere. <laughs> Plus, he, yeah. they, they picked he's up. Not know where he wants him. And they, they picked up Zeke as well, so he doesn't have a hope of getting in there anymore. <laughs> so he doesn't. Poor guy. Might need to drop yeah. him in and get a wee bit of space. I'll trade you. Uh, let's have a look at your team oh, over. Oh, can I? This this will be like a good old uh, nail style <laughs> trade. Well. Can I have a uh, Connor, please? You want James Conner? No. no. Yes. No. You tell okay. you what, you wear a tutu next week, you can have James Conner. Oh, oh, here, I'll wear a tutu then. No. Oh, I'll do that. Oh, he's one of Paul you... Mark's tutus now, right? Okay. Oh, right. Do you have a. Uh, Extra small? Near you. Uh, I have an extra medium that you might be able to fit into. Oh, yes, perfect. Do you even have a medium ever? No, that was just have you ever fit into a medium? Uh, when I was maybe maybe 10. Wow. That's a long time ago. That is a long yeah. time ago. Um, so we're just, we're just looking at your team here. You have Papa Holmes. Obviously, he's going to get your points. You have Derek Henry. He's broken. Um, I know, but he'll get me some points. Williams, I don't know. I don't know about Williams. Williams could be either be hit or miss. Um, with DeAndre Hopkins, he has Ryan Tannehill thrown to him. Uh, DK Metcalf is shit at the start of the season always. No, he's going to be a baller baseball. this year. No, but he's, he's always a baller, but he's always shit at the start. He no, gets like all, four games to get ready. Um, Nico Collins this. isn't even a starter in fucking Texans. <laughs> So don't know why you have it. Yeah, I told you it was a panic talking. pick. Sorry, I'm talking balls he's doing there. I'll take uh, Olivia, Olivia off yeah. you for, for net, Mark. No? You what you want what? Olive? Chris Olave. 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 I always pronounce that wrong, you know. Because well, um, there's no E in nope. it. There is, um, at the end. Aye, oh, but there's no E. Leave it. Leave. There's no leave. Yeah, I know. I fucked it. Thanks, though. Um, Chris Olave is actually predicted to do quite well this year, so I'm going to hold on to it. Certainly for at least, I think, four games. At least. Fair enough. Hmm. Oh. Maybe stick Jones on. Although, to be fair, he I've had him the last three years, and he's really hit and missed. Black Joe, or Zay Jones. Zay Jones. It's not a player I have. No, I haven't. I haven't. He plays, oh. for, plays for Jaguars. Jaguars. Oh, look at that. That's pretty cool. That went everywhere. What's that? Um, just letting anybody that comes in know where Jeff is, you know. We, we, we don't actually know. It could it be like a, a, a time yeah. we're, we're misunderstanding? But hopefully he's alright, to be fair. Um, right. I'm trying. I, I I don't even want to talk to you about your team because I don't want to help you. Me or Mark? Yeah. Oh, you? Why don't, why don't you give me a bit of a hand I, then? So I'm going to go on to Mark and have a wee look at him because I I want you to lose. Oh. Uh, Kirk okay. Cousins. You want who to lose? Sorry. Over yeah. Justin Fields? Does that mean you want to trade Justin Fields then for Aaron Rodgers? That's exactly what it means, man. I'll I'll give you uh, Daniel Jones. And Aaron Rodgers for Justin oh, Fields. Let me let me just pull up your team and see if you're gonna make a dodgy bet. Of course he is. It's Neil. Yeah, never do that. Trade, sorry. You say you're giving him Aaron Rodgers for Justin Fields. Yeah. But sure, he's um, gonna win the Super Bowl this year. Aaron Rodgers is, yeah. So you have to sweeten yeah. that pot a little bit. Aaron Rodgers and who gives it? Who do you want? That's not my starters. Oh, I was gonna say Pollard straight up. <laughs> no, I'm going to go Roger down, Paul Arla. I don't you be saying names and then uh, going nah at the end of it. Mate, take Jackson. I know, I was thinking that. Why do you want Fields so bad? Because he's going he's gonna to ball out this year. Don't get me wrong, he's not going to ball out. Um, 
but I don't know, I just do. I just fancy him. You know when you got you got a wee, a wee, a wee inkling for somebody? Yeah. Um, but yeah, Jamal Williams, I don't think Jamal Williams will be the starter. Did they not add another running back in thingy? Since New Orleans? What up, Easy Kill? Thank you very much for stopping by. You absolute so, legend. Tell you what, I'll consider that uh, that trade, but only after this week. No, so, it has to be now or not. You're not going to play it. Like if I trade you now, you're not going to be able to play him for this set of games. Why? Because surely the waiver will not process till after the game's over. No, the waiver processes on Wednesday. Thursday. Right? I thought it was Thursday. Wait, you're gonna have to drop somebody anyway, so who are you gonna drop? Shit, if I was to get those two off you, I probably would drop. Christian Kirk? No, I'd probably keep Kirk. Ellie's here. I was thinking Devontae Parker there. I'm, I'm sure I'd need a backup tight. Or sorry, a backup wide receiver. Why do you have two defenses? Um, just yeah, true. It, it was the best of a bad bunch. We were scraping the bottom of the barrel at the end of our draft. Well, no, then, I'll, 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 I'll send this trade across. It's up to you if you want to accept, and then you probably would be better getting rid of one of your not, defenses. Not even. Who do you want to get? Drop a yeah. defense, yeah. man. Um, Aaron Rodgers and Dave Jackson. Yeah. Right. I don't know who who you giving. No, because if it's good. oh god. What? Just there you go. Trade is in. The trade is in, boys. And with the uh, first pick in the uh, twenty twenty three talking balls draft, <laughs> Mark trades for. He's going to reject it. Well, I, I did say I would <laughs> consider it. I'm most likely going to reject it. <laughs> well, I knew he was going to reject it. Like. So, uh, I mean, this two two things looking good for me. If if you're willing to give me Connor, huh? I'll buy That's... that on Amazon. I'll buy that shit right now on stream. <laughs> you don't want to see it? Do it. I'll stand up, but I don't think uh, I'll stream. be able to. Get... I don't be able to get one that will fit me, to be honest. And like every every five minutes, you gotta give us like a little fucking twirl. Oh, you're under the bet now. Yeah, you're under the bet. You're not gonna wear a tutu and then not do you, but. 100%. It's like buying a donut and drop kicking it. Well, James Connor, Kirk Cousins, he's good wide right receivers. Um, he only has Madison as running back, but then that doesn't really care for a wide or Kirk Cousins. Um, Jamal Williams. Um, will he be the starter after Alvin Kamara comes back? Don't know. CD Lamb is so overrated. It's unreal. Why is that? He just is so overrated. I actually think that Brandon Cooks, I think Brandon Cooks is our now, that will be a better wide receiver than him. Chris Olave is wide receiver too now that Michael Thomas is fit. And if Michael Thomas stays fit, then Chris Olave will be wide receiver too. AJ Dillon is back up to Aaron Jones. No, you said CD Lamb's overrated, but it's saying here that he's the number one pick with Amari Cooper, who just went to the Cleveland. Huh? Amari Cooper's away to Cleveland, which puts him at his number one pick. You mean number one wide receiver? Yeah. Amari Cooper went last year to Cleveland. He was in Cleveland last year. No, oh, there we are then. And it says yeah. he had um, career highs as well last year. Yeah, he had career highs because he was wide receiver one last year, but he wasn't great for a wide receiver. Because he wasn't great for a wide receiver one, and everybody thinks he's great. Which is the over so, overrated. So you're saying you don't want CD Lamb? I don't want CD Lamb, no, no, no. I like my wide receivers. Right. Who else were you talking balls about there, then? Chris Alave will be the talking balls. Um, he said it, he said it. Um... Chris Olave is wide receiver too if Michael Thomas stays fit. That's my belief. Here, CD Lamb didn't have a bad season. It wasn't awful. Nearly 200 points. Wow. Last season. 
for wide receiver one on the Cowboys isn't great. It's all right. Let me have a look if I remember correctly. I just think he's overrated. Talking mad balls. I don't know, man. That should be a subsection now. Right, so we had two points, eight points, fourteen points, fifteen points. Oh, what's this? Jeff here. Hi, Hello, guys. Jeff. What is up, fellas? <laughs> what's happening? How's it yeah, going, sir? Nice to see you, sir. Good to see you guys. Thing is in Ireland. Awesome, awesome. Far too warm, but then it's far it's too actually, warm. It, it isn't actually roasting here. To be fair, it's actually really, really warm. Come on, Nick. Now, Jeff, you understand people from Northern Ireland, don't you, before we have to uh, try and get rid of our wee mannerisms and stuff? <laughs> you don't can... you? He's on about himself. And you... I'm quite well spoken. So you know when we talk about the crack and all, you know what we're talking about? Yeah. That's what I like to hear. Awesome, awesome. So, Jeff, what have you been up to? Just coaching in the CFL, right? I'm done. Middle of game prep, but I said I'd take half hour. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Uh, so, what are you doing? You, you're in Canada at the minute, are you? Are you in yeah. Hawaii? I thought you said you were in Hawaii. No, I, I live in Hawaii, but I'm, I'm a coaching camp. All right. We're about just past the halfway point. Oh, good days. You're breaking up a wee bit, Jeff. Can you hear it's me? Hard to hear you. Yeah, it's hard to hear you, sir. Let me let me try on this other deal. All right. Uh... Oh. Say we're we'll gonna see. try another one. Oh, happy days. There you go. Well, Jeff will be back. There we go. The base is not connected. Yeah, I'm gonna quickly no. pull up the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Uh, see me fair, bro. My Max, they roasted now. Look, man, I have not enjoyed today at all. It's been awful. Yeah. Like, there we go. Hello, sir. Hello, man. Oh my god, that is so much better. So much better. So oh, much better. I am fucking, the voice. I am fucking amazed by the beards in front of me. Do you like that, there, oh, do you? Thanks. <laughs> I do appreciate that, man. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Show him the T-shirt, Mark. Oh yeah. That's me, there, Jeff. All right. Beardy, but Beardy bollocks. <laughs> I got a half an hour. Is that enough? Yes, that'll do great. Yes, mate. We'll, we'll, we'll fly through everything that we can do, buddy. Um, so, Rob, go ahead. Yeah, so um, as Lynn's already touched on there, you're living away, you're coaching in Canada, um, and you're also doing a bit of Sky Sports Analyst or a sports analyst for Sky. How do you do it? That's mad. <laughs> I'm really lucky, man. I, I, I have really the best of a lot of worlds uh, obviously to live in hawaii is phenomenal because it's paradise i'm 87 steps from the ocean and wow um, nice. then to have the opportunity to come to sky as soon as the cfl season's over and you know that's always been really a passion project of mine i don't do it for the money or being on tv i i, I got no time for that stuff but what I've seen in the last 15 years, 20 years, is how the game has grown exponentially in the UK and Ireland, and particularly now lately in Ireland. Uh, and that's, to me, that's the coolest thing in the world because the same game that I grew up, a six, eight year old kid falling in love with and writing every NFL team, could you please send me a sticker or a you know, a, a yeah. picture or something, you know, and now to think that there are kids all over the world that are, I mean, now they do it by social media and on their phone, but, no, yep. but again, it's just, it's, it's a, it's an incredible thing. You know, um, you clearly have a lot of passion for the sport, Jeff, 
Um, I was doing just a, a wee bit of look in India there before we uh, came oh. on. And oh. I was just saying, you've got such an extensive coaching background from oh. coaching all over the world. It oh. truly is amazing just to read what you've done. Um, you're now back with the uh, Hamilton Tiger Cats, is that right? Yeah. Uh, it's your, your third stint with them. Yeah. Could you just, just tell us a wee bit about that and like how you're enjoying it and what you're doing? Well, you know, it's funny, I, I was a, when I was a young coach, I never really aspired to be an NFL coach. I didn't, that didn't even register with me. But I had seen, when I was in college, playing college football at the University of Maine, I had seen the Canadian Football League. And I became just infatuated with the game. The game is different than the American game. It's much more, I would say, similar to rugby. It's a, it's two downs or, and punt as opposed to three downs and punt. It's the kicking game is way, way, way more important in our game. It is, you can't fair catch punts. You know, you can kick the ball to another player. It's, it's really a phenomenal game. And so, you know, I, I, I that's where I set my sights professionally and was able to come to the Canadian Football League the first time in 1988 as a guest coach at the BC Lions and then got an opportunity to come into the league as a full-time coach in 91. I've been in either here, NFL Europe, or, you know, uh, University of Hawaii since that time. And I've been really, really fortunate and had some really fun fantastic players, some fantastic mentors. And I shake my head every once in a while. I think about how in the hell did, did that happen to me? I mean, I, how in the hell did all this happen? <laughs> you know how I got to be, it's like, everybody asks me all the time. I run into these young cats and they go, man, I want to be on TV like that. I want to, you know, I want to do analyst work on television. And they, they how do I, how do I get to do it? I said, bro, if you're coming to, if you're coming for advice, coming to the wrong guy <laughs> you know how I, you know how it happened for me yeah. Fox which owned Fox Sky back in the day right yeah uh, used, used to send their young broadcasters over to Europe to get them experience right Troy Aikman started here Brian Baldinger started here you know Moose Johnson started here a bunch of them well, Darren Woodson, the old cowboy safety, was supposed to do a show. And I was working at the NFL office in London, and Darren couldn't come at the last minute. And this is you know, back in the, I guess it was like 90, maybe early 2000. And um, we couldn't get anybody in fast enough to do the show because you couldn't get a work permit done and all that stuff that you got to do. And so my boss came down the hallway and he said, would you mind just filling in on the show this weekend? And I said, yeah, cool, that's fine with me. I, I've done some, I fooled around with TV here in Canada. And so, I, you know, I prepared, but I didn't look at it as an audition. And I, was, I thought it was gonna be one kind of fun thing to do. And the end of it. I didn't know this part of the story till many years later. There was a guy, there was an executive from Fox in London that weekend. And he was just clicking through the dials, looking at, the, you know what the content was and he came across our show and he had a post-production meeting on monday and they're all sitting in, the, in a big room and like this guy's a high honcho so everybody's nervous right because you know he goes around the room and he says okay let's talk about the premiership let's talk about the champions league let's talk about whatever right and he goes let's talk about this american football thing right and so my producer at the time you know, he, he's nervous, the young guy's nervous, and, and he goes, the, the guy from Fox goes, who was that blonde guy you had on the show? And <laughs> the producer went, Simon Peter on me, he goes, hey, I don't, listen, he it was, he's just a fill-in, like he was, he, you know, well, he's, you'll never see him again, I promise. I'm him. sorry about that. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and the guy goes, no, I kind of like him, get him back. And that's how I got on TV. <laughs> Crazy. That's crazy, isn't it? Like, yeah. it's crazy how you just get into things, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I have no training in TV. I have no training in public speaking. I have none of that stuff. It's it's just somebody tells talk, tells you, talk about NFL, and you're just like, yes, I love it. I love <laughs> NFL. I can talk about this all day long. 
I think like you guys, same thing. I mean, you guys love football. You love the NFL. And so it makes yep. it easy to communicate about. And the thing that I think that the one advantage I think I have is because I've coached so much, in so many different positions and levels and coordinated and head coached and all of it. Yep. That I think I can bring to the viewer maybe a little different uh, viewpoint or ability to yeah. maybe explain it in a more simplified way so that because I think the beauty of John Madden like he's the greatest broadcaster football broadcaster of all time mm. and John Madden's beauty was that he could the guy in the pub with a pint could understand as well as the head coach of the you know Chicago Bears could understand yeah. Right. He, may, he could speak yeah. to everybody in the room and that's not easy to do and that's a, those are the truly great broadcasters well that's that's what we try and be we we we, we like our beers and sitting in the pub and talking about <laughs> american football you know that's that's kind of what we do <laughs> it, i can see one thing you guys don't like to do what is that Chief? Chief? <laughs> I'm, I'm bold in it so i gotta shave sometimes he shaves the head <laughs> He, he grows to because he's no hair that's so much mustard um but anyway um as we're coaches over here we're, i'm a coach over here mark's a player rob's player rob's coach at the minute um you're a special teams coordinator you're a db coach but over here well it, maybe just for my team that we don't really look at special teams as much as we should how important oh, well. is special teams in your yeah. opinion you know, I think there's that old coaching saw that says it's a third of the game. Well, it's not really a yep. third of the game. It's about a fifth of the game or, you know, three fifths of the game. Uh, you know, here's the thing. In the National Football League, it's become really watered down. And it it's hurts me to say that because, I, you know, I, I was raised by some of the greatest special teams coaches that ever lived and you know they recognized that it was an area where you could get an advantage on your opponent because most people are like what you talked about they don't pay that close attention to it now that's changed yeah. somewhat but there are still guys that do an outstanding job. John Fossil, who coaches with the Cowboys, outstanding. Thomas McGahee with the Giants, outstanding. You know, uh, you go through that whole group of NFL guys, there's a number of guys that really separate themselves from everybody else. And I think it's in a way that a team, and you look at some of the teams that have had success, ultimate success, which is the Super Bowl, you know, Dave Taub with the Kansas City Chiefs is one of the best that there is. And how many times have we seen them rip off a big return or, you know, hit a long field goal at the end of a game or, you know, it's true, true that it can be a winning edge for them. And, you know, Harbaugh proves that. And, and I think one of the things that I think is really frustrating is, you know, the only coach other than the head coach that ever stands in front of the entire team in pro football the only one, it's not the defense coordinator, it's not the offense coordinator, not the quarterback coach, not it's the special teams coach, because he has to work with every position group on the field. Yeah. So if you talk about a guy that should be a head coaching candidate, that's where you would look. And I think one of the reasons why Dick Vermeil had so much success, he was the first full-time special teams coach in the NFL for George Allen. Why do, why has Harbaugh done so well at Baltimore? He grew up as a special teams coach. And those guys are uniquely suited because they are used to dealing with every faction of the team. And they understand overall strategy. If you're an yeah. offensive coach, you're really concerned about how many, how many times the offense gets in the end zone. You don't, you know, you just got to get them in there more than the defense lets them in there. And if you're a defensive coach, you're not, I mean, your whole focus is on stopping them from scoring. Yep. You're a special teams coach. You got to be the guy that is the kind of the go between because what you want your special teams to do is create a long field 
to help the defense and create a short field to help the offense. It's the only place in the game where this where a play can begin as an offensive play and end as a defensive play or end start as a defensive play and end as an offensive play consistently. And that's because the ball transitions back and forth. Well, in every sport, being great at transitioning the football is a key to winning games. And I think that's what's overlooked with the most special teams guys. 100%. I never actually looked at it at that point where you, uh, yeah, where the special teams yeah. is. It's quite a crazy perspective you just thrown at yeah. us there right here. Well, yeah. hey, listen, this is, I just, I just, we just had this conversation in a meeting, in a special teams meeting about three hours ago. I said, hey, you want to be a starter on defense? You want to be a defensive starter? Come play on the kickoff team because that's the first that's the first series of defense right there, right? Yeah. You want to be an offensive starter? Play on the kickoff return team because that's the first offensive football play. And you know, they look at you sometimes like you're about half nuts, but they're <laughs> right. But they're right. <laughs> so. Oh, no, I never, never actually thought of that. No, well, that's what we're, we're planning on looking at more special teams this year because sometimes it does when you lose your games. Oh man, fair. I'm telling you, 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 you get a punt block. I, I mean, st statistics for 50 years will tell you if you get a punt block in the game, you're going to lose over 80% of the time, regardless of what else happens. Yeah. So and, it can be that big of an impact. And do, do you have any special way that you actually coach special teams? Because obviously it's very high contact um, special teams, especially kickoff returning and obviously kickoff. Do you have anything? Did you do special or do you just hit each other? Oh, you know, Robbie, you that's you great, that's, Robbie, that's a great question because coaching special teams, I, 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 I tell people this kind of half joking, but really kind of true. <laughs> if you're going to be a special teams coach, you're going to have to be part therapist, part snake charmer, <laughs> part blind <laughs> gamer, part. <laughs> <laughs> you got a lot of hats you got to wear because. Yeah. You know, I say this to the kids when, when we have our first meeting every every training camp. You know, guys, I get it. You're all here because you're a linebacker or a running back or a tight end or whatever. You know, I, I've done this for 40 years and I've never once seen anybody's football card that says left guard on the punt team, right? It says you know, tight end or you know, outside linebacker or whatever, right? So you identify yourself with another position. But the reality of it is, for all but a very few guys, the bottom half of the roster, their role and their reality is as a special team player. And it's the sooner you embrace that, then the sooner you can play at a high level and we can play at a high level, you know. And I think that's that's important. I think the other thing, Rob, to your question about because they are, it, they are the most violent hits. They are strictly by nature. I mean, you're running 100%. 40 yards at a guy who's running 40 yards at you. Those are usually pretty good collisions. You know, everybody, yeah. talks, everybody talks about the big boys down in the trenches. And yes, they are huge. And yes, they are strong. And yes, they are violent and all that. But they're hitting each other from two feet away, right? Yeah. yeah. Take, take that collision and, you know, run it 60 yards and see what happens. It's like a train wreck. Every kickoff is a train wreck. Everyone, right? And sometimes, I'll be honest with you, standing on the sidelines, you hear those pads crack like they crack, and you just, it, you know. It's, it's, a, it's a beautiful sound. <laughs> it is a nice sound. <laughs> it's a beautiful <laughs> sound. Sometimes it's beautiful to watch. <laughs> and uh, so, but what you have to do, and I, this, this is the way I explain it to our kids, our players. Guys, it's like, fighter pilot training, right? I mean, those airplanes cost $6 billion or whatever they cost now, right? You can't just go up there and shoot each other down, right? You can't, it doesn't work that way, right? You yeah. have to, you have to go through all the maneuvers. You have to go all, you know, all the barrel rolls and all the dog fight and all that other stuff. You just never pull the trigger. The same is true with the way you practice special team. You've got to go to that moment right before contact and then pull off. Right. Because, because it's yeah. just physically not you're not it's not you're not capable over an 18 week season or 18 game season to be able to take that much contact. Yeah. That's it. 
Uh, it's uh, very much spoken like a true analyst there, um, Jeff. Um, <laughs> you touched a wee bit on like how you got into sports analyzing. Um, would you have any tips on like if any or a couple of three bearded aspiring analysts wanted to get into it? Yeah, I would, uh, here, here's the thing, the biggest thing. I think that when, you know, the, the, I think the best analysts are always analyzing what they know best, right? You can bullshit your way through it a little bit. And, and, I'll, I'll, be, and I'll be honest with you, folks. We've been doing it for a year. <laughs> <laughs> there's, some, there's some guys on pretty high, pretty high-powered networks that don't know if it's got air or feathers in it to be real honest yeah. <laughs> yeah and some of them are guys that have played the game at a very high level but just because a guy plays the game at a high level doesn't mean he even understands the game he's normally extremely gifted right and if i wanted somebody to explain something to me i wouldn't want the guy who it's so easy for that he doesn't even think about it yeah. I want the guy who had to struggle to get it done because he had to figure it out and look at what it really was and what the challenge was and how can I best, you know, you know find the answer, right? Yeah. And so yeah. <clears throat> you look at it and, and say, okay, now, do you do you understand the game, right? Because we the game is growing all the time. Great. The game is a, it's not a finite thing. It's like an amoeba. It's, it's constantly changing. I mean, we've seen in just in the last few years, you've seen, you know, advent of, you know, there's more shotgun than there's ever been. People are, you know, it used to be, I remember fellas, I'm telling you when Miles Davis brought the run and shoot to the NFL and they said, no way you can play in the NFL with four wide receivers and no tight end and no fullback if you can't do it it's it was like it was like he had committed some crime some heinous yeah. crime to take the <laughs> tight end and the fullback off the field but what they found out was yeah you can you know buddy ryan used to call the run and shoot the chuck and duck because he said you're gonna get your quarterback killed well christ now everybody's in one back set the quarterback's in the shotgun and you know and, but the game's now coming back another way as the Travis Kelsey's and, you know, those kinds of tight ends, you know, Gronk and guys that were big but could, you know, create yes. matchup problems for safeties. Yeah. Yeah. Or run by linebackers. Now the game changed. So we went from like, like I, I'm so blessed in my life to have seen how the game has changed just evolved right you remember the washington redskins win a super bowl and they're all four wides and it's the smurfs and the fun bunch and all that stuff and yep. then so what what did what did the nfl defend defensive coaches did they went out and got all corners because they had to be able to match up with all those wide outs and so then what do the offensive coaches do they go out and get big receivers because they got all small dbs and then and then so the the defense, the defensive coaches come back and they all go get big DBs. The offensive <laughs> coaches come back and they start using tight ends as wide receivers. And yes. now, you know, I think that's just the way the game has gone. And it's well, constantly- so You should have to adapt every scenario, don't you? Every, every, every year is a different deal. Yeah. And I mean, in, in, the, in our lives as pro football coaches, the season is one thing, but the off season is a completely another thing. We don't do personnel. We don't, I mean, we'll grade players for the draft and stuff like that, but we're not out looking for players and all that stuff. What we do is we lock ourselves in the film room or you take your laptop home or wherever you go and you're constantly watching tape, looking for ideas, looking for things that people are doing that are new and different. How can, you know, what, 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 is, what is exactly going on over there in Seattle with that cover three defense? How are they able to hold up you know, against four verticals. And it's called, we call it research and development. You're constantly yep. researching and trying to find new things that can give you, you know, slide edges and small wins. That's it. Dad, well, we'll move on though, we bit on the NFL. Jeff, I hear you are a Raiders fan. 
Is that true? <laughs> or yes. Is, I'm, yes. I, you know, all right. Now, let me. I'll give you my my roots to fandom. Okay. Right. Like I told you, when I was about eight years old, six to eight years old, like I came, I was like I had, I was ADD. I had to be. I had more <laughs> DDDs than you know. They didn't know what that stuff was <laughs> back then, right? So, um, so I'm, I'm, uh, I go to my dad one day. I said, Dad, I, I want to, I want some pictures of football players, right? And he says, Well, son, just. Right, he, and he gives me this book, and it's it's the list of all. There were 18 teams at the time, 18 NFL teams. He said, "Just write him a letter." So I, my little kid handwriting, I write these 18 letters. My mom posts them for me, and the Detroit Lions sent me back this big packet, and it had stickers and you know, program and pictures and all this stuff. And I was a Lions fan from then on, right? Right, and then when I got to college, when I got to high school, then the Raiders captured me because that was Al Davis, Silver and Black, Just Win Baby, Fred Bolitnikov. You know, I mean, that was the real Raiders, right? And I've really been a Raider fan ever since, and it's been a long, hard road, fellas. I'm just here to tell. <laughs> yeah, but see, that would be no. How do you think they're going to do this year? I think, you know what, Neil, I think they're going to be better, man. I think here's why. I think that Jimmy's been good for Josh and Josh has been good for Jimmy. You know what I mean? I mean, I think yeah. that marriage is, is good. Uh, you know, Carr is good a player as he's been in the league. After he got his, after he broke his leg that time, you know, he was on a MVP pace and then broke his leg and, and you yeah. know, really set him back. I don't think he was ever Josh's guy. And I think that's important. The relationship between the quarterback and the head coach is really, really vital. So they've known each other. They've worked with each other before. I think that's a team that has enough talent on offense to score points. I think we've seen that a little bit in preseason, that they, they could, you know, they might be able to score some points. Where I worry about the Raiders is, okay, who's, who's going to be on the other side of the story? You know, who's going to be on the other side of the guy that really is maybe the most underrated defensive lineman, Max Crosby, in the National Football League. He's amazing. Oh, I mean, he, <laughs> and, and you know, you look at him, and I, I went, I have a very close friend that coaches at the Raiders, and I went and visited him. I had two of them, actually. I went and visited him. First of all, let me tell you something. If you ever get a chance to go see their facility, it is incredible. I mean, it is absolutely, and I've seen just about every big time football facility there is, college and pro. And I'm going to tell you something. What the Raiders have is the Taj Mahal of all football facilities. It does look very, very sexy, to be fair, now. Oh, I'm telling you now. I've never, some of the stuff I've never seen. I mean, I've never, I've, yeah. uh, I mean, like, what? But so I think. For them to show significant improvement, their defense has got to come a long way. And we'll see if that's the case. See, I, I don't put a lot of stock, guys, in preseason football because I know how coaches approach preseason football, right? And I think there are some teams that are like, there should be optimism in Green Bay based upon what you saw Love do during preseason, right? Mm -hmm. But tap the brakes mm. now that's a real small <laughs> body of work and it's against a lot of vanilla defenses and a lot of players that probably aren't going to play on sundays this fall so i think there's a lot of the same thing in indianapolis everybody's falling in love with richardson and let me tell you something he's about to get the whole deal and the whole deal is a lot you know when you yeah. start talking about nfl defenses and you know, first line you know, first string players and so I'm not saying he won't succeed. I'm just saying it's you, you got to go forward with caution. Yeah. Thank well, the uh, the Patriots they they brought in Jacoby Myers in all this season, and Jacoby is underrated in my eyes. I yeah. always in fantasy football I always pick Jacoby because Jacoby always comes up with good numbers every week, solid numbers. He's just so underrated, it's unreal. And he played for Josh as well, didn't he? 
you're I think that under I think their whole receiver room is underrated. Yeah. You know? And I think they've done they've made strides in the offensive line. Uh, you know, the the kid that Meyer that they are signed out of Notre Dame, drafted out of Notre Dame. I think he's got a chance to be a really good tight end. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so everybody talks about losing Darren Waller, but tight. You know, I'm not sure Darren Waller was ever really Josh's type of tight end. If you, you know, one of the things about Meyer that's interesting when you start talking about fit, you know, what was Meyer's nickname at Notre Dame? Baby Gronk, right? And okay. that's. Yeah, that's the kind of tight end I think um, Josh really wants more. He, he can play in line. Waller was never a good in line tight end. He's like Kelsey. You know, they're the one of those flex tight ends, H back kind of guys. But Meyer, although he's not a devastating blocker, is a much better in line tight end than Waller would ever be. Um, what are you thinking about the, uh, the Garoppolo Adams connection? Do you think that's gonna work off well, if he stays? I I think I think that you know one of the knocks on Jimmy, and it's amazing, guys, how it's so you're graded on such a like, there's there's I'm glad the, the critics aren't never graded my math classes because there, <laughs> I mean I had to, I only passed if it was on the curve. <laughs> I mean to tell you, in the NFL, you know everybody remembers the throw in the Super Bowl where Garoppolo misses Emmanuel Sanders by a yard at the end of the game or met, you know, Shanahan dialed the perfect route against the coverage. They were playing in and out bracket and Emmanuel kind of hinted to the corner and broke to the post and ran right through the bracket. And all Garoppolo had to do was just get the ball to him and they're Super Bowl champions, right? And he missed him by a yard. But that throw has haunted him ever since because everybody remembers it and it's kind of a low hanging fruit that people say, well, can he win the big one? Can he throw the ball deep with accuracy? You know, I mean, he's completed a lot of passes in his career. He's won yeah. a lot of football games, you know, but you know, it's the same thing. Dan Marino, one of the greatest that ever picked up a football criticism of him never won a Super Bowl right mm -hmm. I mean, you got to win a lot of games just to get to the Super Bowl so yeah, yeah. you know I, I'm not sure those comparisons are really fair well it's more like uh, Garoppolo is gets injured a lot mm -hmm. um, Adams there's talk of him going to this lovely wee place here oh no not another guy not another you know, top player <laughs> yeah. you know let's 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 you know lay the cards on the table and say I, Woody Johnson has drawn a line in the sand, right? And I give him credit. You know, I don't know the guy. I wouldn't know him if I walked if he walked past me on the street. But what I do know is an owner who's paying the price to win a Super Bowl. He wants. He's committed to winning, and I think yeah. he's been that way for a long time at the Jets. You know, the Jets in Florham Park, they got a beautiful facility. I mean, it, he's he's given them what they need, right? Yes. Now he's gone out and pushed all his chips in the, in the middle of the table with Aaron Rodgers. And you know, they drafted it. Joe Douglas has done a good job with the draft. He's done so good. And, and you know, the key one to me is can Mackay Becton be the right tackle that they desperately need now? He's got a, he's, he, you know, he's got a weight issue. He's got an attention issue, right? Like, but I think Aaron Rodgers has been a real positive force in that in that locker room. And watching Hard Knocks, which I'm an addict for. How about how, how sick am I, right? I do this for a living, right? I do it for a living, and I watch other guys do it for a living on TV. Like I'm, a, I'm, I'm nuts. I'm, I should be. I should be. You're you just, you're just mad into it. You love it. You love it. talking about it. You love watching it. Just, you can't stop. It's, it's like an addiction. Yeah, so I, was, I was watching a meme um, earlier on. It was like, you know what? You've only got a couple of more football seasons before 
we're all dead. You know, never oh, have yeah. football ever again. You know what I mean? So just enjoy yeah. football and, now. And talk what, about there, football. There's a lot of truth to that because none of us is none of us is promised next season. So we better enjoy yeah. this. Exactly. Right. So just enjoy it. You know, watch football today. Wake up tomorrow. Watch some more football. Wake up tomorrow. Wake up the next day. Watch more football. You know, yeah. that's just the way life should be lived. And then you wake up the next day and you're divorced watching. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Well, then, <laughs> then you can watch loads of football. <laughs> <laughs> but, Jeff, I have, I have, I'm going to give you a choice here before we move on. We have uh, people's questions mm-hmm. or a quiz. I'll take, I'll, take hard. People, I'll take the people's questions because I love that stuff. I, because I, there's loads. We, or, well, when I say loads, there's nine. We have nine at the moment. We started, um, we started a podcast just so we could, you know, because I think the fans deserve an opportunity to ask the question. You know? Yes, 100%. Yeah. Well, first one. What's the most memorable match or event you've ever covered in your career so far? Wow. Oh, boy. I tell you, that's some big question because certainly the Super Bowls have to be up there because it's such, I mean, when you think about it, and, and this is the NFL hype doctors at work, but they call it the greatest single day sporting event in the world. And I'm not sure it ain't because when you look at the numbers of people around the globe that watch the game and the amount, you know, the, the amount of money that's paid for a 30 second commercial. That's yes. Yes. I'm for it. Take it. Those are all, you know, that, that, where would you ever see Janet Jackson or Bruce Springsteen or you know, any of the, I'm talking about some of the greatest entertainers on the planet. Yes. Hey, to be on stage at the Super Bowl for 15 minutes. I mean, that, I mean, that's crazy. I mean, you know, it's just JLo. I mean, she, she's got a license to print money, right? When she, <laughs> when she goes on tour. And she pays to be on stage at the Super Bowl. That's the that's the impact of that game. Wow! Any particular Super Bowl? Um, you know, I don't like. They all have kind of uniqueness to them. I think you know, watching Coach Vermeil win when he was in St. Louis, that one was probably the most fun for me because he's been such a Important part of my life, um, and and uh, and knowing how much it meant to him, um, you know, a, a guy that you know took a Philadelphia Eagle team to the playoffs. They had been in the playoffs for twenty some years, and he gets to the Super Bowl and gets waxed by the Raiders. And I I know two years later he's out of football. He has a nervous breakdown. He's out of football. And I know during all that time he was away from football, it ate at him that he had never accomplished that goal. And then got a chance to go back to St. Louis and he gets Kurt Warner and it's his fairy tale story and the greatest show on turf. And there they win the Super Bowl by one yard. I mean, <laughs> Hollywood doesn't write shit like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the next question from the people is, uh, if you could interview any famous athlete, past or present, present, who would it be and why? <laughs> president. The president. Oh, man. Um, oh, there's so many that I would love to sit down and just talk to. I don't know if I'd like to interview them. I, I, I think I'd rather just really talk to them. You know? uh, Jim Brown, who was such yeah. an amazing player and walked away from football right at the height of his career and the height of his ability to make money and fame and adulation just said about enough and walked away and um, stood up for so many things at a time at a time in american history where black people didn't stand up he did um he would be one um you know, I've, I've I've met so many that that you know I I've always like, I guess I've been just too lucky and, and uh, most of the ones that I would have liked to 
you know, like, how would you not love? This is this is where you're going to boast, Jeff, and go. Anyone that I would want to speak to, I've already spoken. No, to. I know, but how how would you how, how how would you think about a guy like like Vince Lombardi? How cool would it have been to talk to Vince Lombardi about the Packers? Yeah, you know, it's like you know, and just that stuff is fascinating to me. You know, and but see, for and it certainly has nothing to do with talent. It has everything to do with opportunity. I have been blessed to be able to do some things in that, like, if you if you'd have told my six, <clears throat> when I was in eighth grade, you had to write this essay about, you know, what you want to be, right? Or what you want your life to be, right? And I just, because I was hanging in the ass in school, I just wrote the teacher's question was, what what kind of life do you want to have, right? And then you had to fill it, like, it was supposed to be an essay, right? I just yep. wrote an interesting one and turned it in right? <laughs> and if it didn't come true you know well, i just lucked into it you know and i'm really grateful for all the opportunity like that yeah on that note games. um mine's people's questions clearly from an, an up-and-coming sports analyst um they want to know how do you stay updated with the latest news and trends in the sporting world to provide <coughs> accurate analysis I, I, that's a great question i think that's one of the challenges that you know, every coach has and every analyst has is to continue to work, to learn and talk to people and network and not network for, you know, how to move your career forward as much as how to, your career will move forward if you're good at what you do, right? But network on what's the latest things, what have you seen out there, you know, who's doing something interesting. Listen, right? Everybody wants to, Everybody wants to talk, but nobody wants to listen. Well, if you listen, you, you learn. And if you learn, then what you learn, you can convey. And I think that's what an analyst's job is. And another one, what do you enjoy most about being an NFL analyst? Um, I think the, the, the joy that I get more than anything else is when like whether it's london or dublin or honolulu or wherever i am in the world and somebody says hey you know i really like your show thanks for thanks for explaining to me you know what quarters coverage was right or you know thank you for simplifying the game for me i got, I got a great one today a uh, guy said you know you even made my daughter who's eight years old love football well, can you do that for me? <laughs> <laughs> I have a nine-year-old and she doesn't like it at all. Come oh, on, watch we'll football. We'll, we'll, get her, we'll get her right. Yeah, right. <laughs> Definitely. Okay, um, next one. If you could choose any sports venue in the world to watch a game, which one would it be and why? Well... Any any sports venue anywhere any any, any, sport, any venue. sports venue in the world yeah wow um, you know I think maybe one of the places I I, I would say it's the only place but one of the places where I've never been to a live game and I really would love to see the Packers play in December outdoors at Lambo. And I is hate not, cold weather. Is that not freezing? Is that not the snow? snow? The, I, I hate cold weather, fellas. Like I'm the biggest sissy in the world when it comes to cold. But I'm just telling you, I would love to I would love to go see that spectacle that is Packer football in in December. Not in August, in December. When you know for again, same thing. I know I'm dating myself, but you know the, the ice bowl where you know it the Bart Star had to sneak it in from the one yard line and the field was frozen and you know guys were getting frostbite during the game and yeah, all that, that whole thing. Committed that, to the calls. Yeah, that that was yeah. that was the football as a, as an eight or ten year old kid I just couldn't get enough of and set me on this path. So to go do that, yeah, that'd be cool. That's that's like us over here in the summer. <laughs> Where is the weather? 
22 Mad. degrees and we're complaining. Well, it was well, 22 degrees the day. To be fair, it rained all the whole summer until the kids went yeah. back to school. We got a we got a week of sun in the in June, rained until this week, and now the kids are back at school. Sunny. <laughs> That's why I, that's, that's why I, it's a little known fact that every Irishman has web feet because it's right. <laughs> yes, 100%. Uh, and because we drink loads of Guinness. My, uh, my next question for you is what, um, what was the most inspirational encounter that you've had with an athlete? It can be famous or not? Ooh. I think I think one of the things that was really amazing was, and it's a you can get his book. Uh, the kid that I had known as a high school player in New Orleans, um, because as a high school player he was probably the he was at about the same time of, as the Honey Badger, and he was from inner city New Orleans, kid named Delvin Bro, and. Delvin broke his neck as a high school senior covering a kickoff. And he was one of the most highly recruited players in the, in the United States as a high school player. And everybody said you know, he was going to be the next one, right? He was going to be the next Patrick Peterson. He was going to be the next that, that group. And LSU, he had agreed to go to LSU, he had committed to LSU in his senior year, broke his neck. LSU honored the commitment, gave him a scholarship. He went to LSU, but he never played one down of football at LSU, not one. And I'm here in 2013, and a, his high, one of his high school coaches, Frank Daggs, calls me on the phone. I had known Frank for a long time, and obviously I knew who Delvin was. And he said, Jeff, uh, do you remember Delvin Bro? I said, Shit, Bagby, everybody remembers Delvin Bro. Delvin Bro was the real thing. He was legit. He's cold, man. He's like the best. He's, he was it, right? Yeah. He goes, well, he he wants to play again. I said, I said, Frank, the guy broke his neck. He's lucky to walk again, right? If he he said, no, no, you don't you're not listening to me. So you this kid wants to, the kid wants to play again. I said, Frank, are you out of your mind? He goes, he's playing arena football for the New Orleans Voodoo, and he wants to play at a higher level. He wants to play in the pros. And I said, okay, send him out. We were in going to be in San Francisco a week later, and we were doing a free agent camp. And I said, send him, send him out. We'll take a look at him. So he comes out and I hadn't seen him since he was a high school kid. So now he's about 22 and he's thicker and bigger and like had grown up. He's a man now. And <laughs> we had this group of receivers and there wasn't one of them that could get off the line of scrimmage. I'm, I'm telling you, couldn't get off the line of scrimmage, right? <laughs> and so all of our scouts are like, this kid's unbelievable. He runs 4'4", he's, you know, he's 6'1", he's 205 pounds, he's strong. As... And I said, guys, before you get all excited, I want you to go walk behind Delvin and just see what's back there. And they looked at me like, what the hell is he talking about? I said, just look at, look at the back of his head, right? And he had a surgical scar that ran from the base of his head, base of his skull, all halfway down his back where they had had to open him up and actually put his spine back together damn and so you know our doctor said <clears throat> no way and he he kept pushing it and pushing it pushing it wanting some second opinion wanting second opinion so finally they cleared him and I remember the first day in training camp when there was a collision, there was a big pile of bodies and he was in the, in, in the pile of bodies. And I didn't even want to look to see if he was still, like I expected him to be just laying there as motionless again on the ground. And he jumped up and went back to the huddle and I, I kind of breathed a sigh of relief. But that kid went from us, he, he was a three-time CFL all-star, 
he went back to the Saints, his boy, his boyhood team, and he made the NFL All Rookie Team after never playing one down of college football and breaking his neck as a high school player. I don't know if I can wow. think of a guy who's more inspirational than that. That's crazy. Yeah. That is absolutely mental. Holy crap. Yeah, and, and uh, I think that you can get, Delvin wrote a book about his life, and it's really, a, it, you know, it's really a, a great read. And, and uh, you know, I know you can get it on Amazon. You don't know what the book's called, do you? Or me? Yeah, you don't know the, what the book's called? Oh. Uh, I think it's something like unbroken, you know, that he uses his name as kind of a it's B-R-E-A-U-X is the way it's spelled, his name. And it's Delvin Bro. And uh, it, it's a great, it's a great story. Because he, he came up from a, in a very, very difficult part of New Orleans and had to deal with a lot of things that no kid should have to deal with. Yeah. And, yeah. The book's called Unbroken. Unbroken, that's it. Well, this question is going to sound very stupid compared to that last very inspirational one. Um, uh -oh. Why do you rate in capitals? Okay, so I get, I, I get asked this a lot, right? And I, 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 I try and be patient because I am damn near blind. Like, seriously, <laughs> I, I, like I, my eyes are so bad, right? And... If I don't have my contact, first of all, I hate glasses. If I don't have my contacts in, I can't see anything. I'm like Mr. Magoo, I'll bump into the wall, right? <laughs> and so if I don't type in uppercase, I can't see what I'm typing. And I'm a, I'm a, the world's second worst speller, right? So I got those things going against me. So if I don't, <laughs> if I don't type in uppercase, it, you wouldn't be able to read it. You'd think I was writing. I was writing in some foreign language, right? But, I that's don't know crazy. What, but that's, <laughs> you, so you're writing capitals because you can't see what you're writing. Yeah, that's if you exactly, don't. That's exactly that's what madness. <laughs> that's brilliant. That's brilliant, though. Everybody, everybody. I get these. I get these tweets all the time. Say, hey, stop yelling, will you? I mean, why are you shouting <laughs> at me? <laughs> I'm not shouting. I'm freaking <laughs> Every tweet you just picture Jeff going, and more news! <laughs> Do you not get one of those systems where you get like a mic and you talk and it types for you? Yeah, well, I'm going to tell you, I'm not, I, listen, I have a hard time turning my phone on, much less. Fair enough. Advanced <laughs> technology. That's him. Um, so the next one is Do you have a favorite sports related memory from your own playing days? Uh. Yeah, there were a lot of them, you know, uh, like I say, I was really fortunate to experience a lot as a player. Um, I was a really good high school player and uh, went to college and, you know, when you, when you have some ability, you tend to not appreciate that ability and then all of a sudden if it's taken away from you you really learn whether you first of all you learn whether you really love the game or not mm. second you really learn to appreciate every down of the game so I go to I go to college and um, one of the few freshmen that's playing and you know I think I'm hot shit right and um, I tear up my knee and I had never been injured in my whole life. I mean, I was like, that doesn't happen, right? Like, you just, I, like I thought, I was just gonna play forever, right? And then all of a sudden you tear, up, you tear up a knee and now you're in rehab and you're coming back and you're trying to fight your way back on the roster and you can't do some of the things that you could do before. And you really find out, like I said, number one, do you really love the game enough do the work that it takes to get back on the field, right? Yeah. And what you learn in that experience is to love the work, right? To love the grind, 
to love the, the you know, I, the surgery that I went through was really, really drastic. And, you know, just to be able to you know, bend my leg again and to have, you know, to go through the process of having the trainer take your knee, take your leg and bend it until the adhesions from the surgery pop in. I mean, that's, I mean, it's like getting shot by a gun. And, you know, and then to be able to walk back on the field and play again, that was a tremendous experience. That was a life-changing experience. Now, scoring touchdowns and, you know, winning games and all that stuff, that, that stuff all, I mean, that just, that's, you forget all that stuff, right? I couldn't tell you the scores, you know, or how many times you got a chance or any of that stuff. I couldn't tell you that stuff. But just I did it too often, Jeff. I can tell you about my, <laughs> I can tell you about my friends. I can tell you about the teammates I had. I can tell you about the coaches I had. I can tell you about that experience of getting hurt and coming back. Those are the things that I'll carry with me forever. Awesome. <laughs> Huh. Uh, been so well traveled, Jeff. Um, do you have any plans in the future to maybe hop across the wee pond and come have a look at the talent that's over on our beautiful little island? You know what? We I am going to come back to to Ireland. I'm going to be back in Ireland in January. I think it's uh, you no. Know, Michael from Pro Football Ireland has put it together, and it's. Uh, I think we're going to be in Dublin. We're going to be in Belfast, and we're going to Limerick. And oh, I really don't know to Limerick. I've never been to Limerick, so uh, you know what? He, my first time in okay, I'll tell you about my Irish experience, and this made me fall in love with Ireland, right? <laughs> I mean, I've been a lot of beautiful places in the world, so I don't like, and I don't, that, that, yeah, I can appreciate it's, it's, but there's a lot of beautiful places in the world. Well, I have a friend who at the time was the head coach at Trinity in Dublin, right? And um, he asked me to come over and spend some time, spend a day with his coaches and then put on a clinic that they could use to promote football. And then we were going to have a practice, an open practice for any kid in Ireland that wanted to come practice American football the next day, right? And got all the local coaches involved and uh, American Football Ireland and everybody. And we, I came over. And, you know, first of all, it was a phenomenal trip because of just the history and Dublin and Trinity and the Book of Kells and all that stuff, right? For but sure. but um, we go out to practice, bro, we go out to practice and the grass on the field is like this high. Right? <laughs> and yep. there's, there's not a line anywhere. And there's maybe three balls, right? There's no blocking, there's nothing, right? Yeah. But pure passion for the game. There were kids who drove for four hours to practice yeah. for one hour. I said, Are you sure, right? mate? You, got, you, just, you drove four hours down here to practice. Get in the car and you're going to drive four hours. That's eight hours today. You spend in a car to spend an hour on this field with no lines. Right, and no equipment. And I looked at these kids and I said, I, I told them, I remember telling them that there are five kids in America that would do what you guys are doing. Right? I mean, it's just the, the incredible passion that they had for the game. Right? And to, to watch them have, you know, like it was just an incredible moment. And that's when I, ever since that, I've always come back. I would always try and go back once a year and help grow football if I can. Because you know what, you guys should you guys should take some bows because the growth of the game has happened. It's exploded in Ireland in the last five years. Yeah. Now that the Steelers have chosen to take Ireland as their marketing territory, it's only going to get better. And tag yeah. leaders, you know, kick you know. Ireland's next great. I mean, it's like. I know, it's just onwards and upwards at the minute. Like, everything yeah, seems to be well, coming. You got, so a guy, you got a guy playing in the National Football League. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
No. Um, we had we had our first uh, women's um, national flag team as well. Yeah. So we did this year. It's been it's been a crazy year for for yeah. American football Even, here. You know, yeah, the and, European Championships here as well. Yeah. So flag. yeah. Henry Hodgson is a friend of mine. He, Henry is the head of NFL UK and NFL yeah. Europe, and he was the had all was in charge of all the digital media for the NFL. And it's it's podcasts like yours that are the grassroots builders of the game, right? It's not uh, you know something that. Good morning football, or it's not, you know, red zone. It's not. It's shows like yours are that are helping to grow the game on a grassroots level, and that's the way it has to grow if it's going to yeah. stay, right? You know, if it's going to be more than just a passing thing. Well, we're hoping it's just going to keep getting better and better, and um, we would love to have an Irish team in the uh, the EFL. I think that would be a good thing. I, you know what, I, I think that they've got to start to look that direction because to be honest with you, I, and I'm not being critical, I'm just making an observation. You know, they tried to expand into Turkey. They tried, you know, da, 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 da. I think the proof will be in the pudding when you look at the number of UK and Irish players that are now, you know, we've got a kick, kid just kicked his first extra point in college football for Idaho State, one of Tag's kids that's out, you know, playing now. There are more and more of them going, and there's more and more kids playing. And yep. you know, it's a. Yeah, I agree with you. I think that's something that is coming. I know. Hopefully, we'll get an NFL game here very, very soon. Steelers v Jags. That'd be awesome. <laughs> that would be great. Awesome. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 can you imagine fifty thousand terrible towels in the Aviva? How cool would that? Yes. Be? <laughs> Oh, loads of, so good, so good. Loads, loads of drop passes because it never stops raining. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're, we're doing all right. We've got another college game coming next year as well, and hopefully that's just a, a yearly thing now, and that's not just a wee flash in the pan. Hopefully we have a yearly college game and then move on to an, a yearly NFL game would be absolutely amazing. Yeah, it's all steps. I mean, it's all steps. I think what the Notre Dame, the success of the Notre Dame Navy game this year, yeah, you know, that's not kept secret. You know, I mean, people back in the states, you know, and that's how it happened with the London game, right? Yeah, the Monarchs had failed, the Claymores had failed, right? You know, everybody. I remember I was working for the league at the time in London, and Alistair Kirkwood took that idea back to New York and he said, well, we need to put a game on, not a preseason game, a real game in London. Yeah. And I swear to God, I could hear the laughter all the way in London from New York. No way. League office. Because they said, it'll never work. You just, you just lost two football teams. What makes yeah. you, what makes you think people, they don't care about football in the UK. And what? he basically bet his career on that game. And when it first happened, there I remember being in the States and the reaction of the people in the States was so incredible. It was like, what the hell do they know about football over there? Why they, you know, there was, there was a lot of animosity, pushback from fans in the United States saying that our game shouldn't go outside the borders of this country. Yeah. Why are you taking the game away from the fans? Because it's a home game for somebody. Right? Yeah. That their their fan base was well, thank God the NFL, because it's a business first, saw the possibility of a, another revenue stream and put their marketing behind it and their muscle behind it and their money behind it and it's become what it is now, which is hugely successful. And I think the precursor of what will be a European division in the national football. Mm. Moving to Germany now as well with the. That would be it, that's what I'm saying. Remember, remember, a division is only four teams, right? Yeah. And yeah. So if you put a team in London and you put a team in Frankfurt and you put a team in Munich and who you know, who knows where else, right? I mean, why could why would I think they couldn't play NFL football in Croke Park? That would be pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. That would be awesome. 
<laughs> Just remember, it, it, before you say it'll never happen, they said the same thing about the London games. Oh, it'll never happen. It'll no, never that would be absolutely amazing. Imagine having an NFL game every week close to home. Yep. That would be just amazing. I think it would be, be the coolest thing in the world. I think it would be... Oh, it'd be so amazing. Like It would just be so good because it means that we don't have to spend a clean fortune to go over to America. Because I, I have booked tickets to go to New York over the Super Bowl because I, the, the, the Super Bowl is too expensive. So I think the New York Jets are going to be in the Super Bowl. So if I'm in New York, then at least I'm with me own, you know? <laughs> That's a good plan, man. That's a good plan. It's wishful thinking is what it is, man. It is, oh, yes. It's positive thinking, man. I got to run because I got to get ready for a yes, game. Yes, I was just about to say to let you go, buddy. I'm sorry for keeping you longer. Oh, no, man, it's been a bit. I just been enjoying. I'd love, I'd love to do it again if you guys want to do it again. And, and, yes, 100%. Uh, I, hope to, yeah. I hope to see you at one of our three shows in Ireland when we get to January. Yes, 100%. We will indeed. Yeah. We will be there. We can, nice do, we can, do, a live, we can do a live uh, hit from... Talking Balls podcast, right from the show. Brilliant. That sounds amazing. We can do that. Sounds great. Brilliant. Right, Drinking man. Guinness and Talking Balls. I'll even bring my readers hot for you, man. <laughs> yep. All right. I love it. Take care, fellas. Thank you very much, Jeff. Thanks for coming on. Have a Thank good you. day, buddy. Thanks very much. Right. Thank you. Well, he's pretty cool. I like him. Yeah. Awesome. So that was Jeff Reinbold, everybody. <laughs> um. Yes, that, that, was, story, that, was, that story about that fella was amazing. To be fair, yeah, that, was, that was class. 100%. Like I mean, I, I that's now love that I got the two best questions. <laughs> yeah, to be fair, you didn't like your questions either. Why did yeah, I get these uh, questions? <laughs> I'm now glad I did. Now I'm like, oh, I'm so glad I had these questions. But anyway, that was Jeff Reinbold. Absolutely lovely guy. He will be in Ireland in January, so. Uh, We'll, we'll find we'll out we'll we'll that. Him up. We will be hitting him up. I'm having Sample a beverage or two. Have a <laughs> Guinness with him. Um, but anyway, what was I saying? Mark, to accept my trade. <laughs> you snap back to that after all that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I am I just on principle. I'm going to decline it now. Don't decline I... it. Wait, what principle? What happened? <laughs> And you know what the worst part of it was? I did a brand new game too. Oh, do you have new new logos? I, we can I guess have new logos want. and everything, mate. Do, do you want us to guess them, or <laughs> who do you think this team is? Oh, no, 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 no. Keep, keep a secret. Keep a secret. Turn it up. Next week might be watching. <laughs> All right, yeah, um, yeah. Next week's guest might be watching. <laughs> you don't want to be at that. Um, the T swords. The T, so the, the, the yeah, <laughs> Trinity. Did anyone here draft say Trinity? I said Trinity, like yeah, obviously T for Trinity, right? T for Trinity. But anyway, so have you accepted that trade yet? And CD Lamb is underrated, overrated. Sorry. Um. So I'm just right. going to go back to the whole conversation that I was having, uh, uh, and I don't care. It, it it might be. Are we going to do a quick fire round of NFL predictions, mate? And then. Oh, hang. We'll just do that. Let's do get them in got, first you, week. You Quick fast. Day, day. No, no, yeah. but it's obviously if we start talking about it, it's going to be a that's going to be another half hour segment, man. But we're like at an hour and a half. That's what I'm saying. But if we just do quick fire, it'll be two minutes. Right. <laughs> Chief Lance. Chief Scrub. Chief Mark. I mean, this isn't such a simple one. I mean, you've got... Oh, for um, fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going Lance. Uh, <laughs> dick. Um, Chiefs. Chiefs. Uh, Browns, Bagels. Bagels? Uh, Bengals? Bagels. Mm, uh, Bagels. It's got to have to be Bengals, don't it? 100. I'm going Bengals also. Bengals. And consider Mark is... A closet Bengals fan. I assume he's uh, going to go for them. I am, I am a little bit, yeah. So, yeah. Ravens Texans. I will Ravens. assume that Rob's going to go Ravens because he's a closet Ravens fan. I bought to have a Ravens jersey to be fair. <laughs> yeah. And yourself? Um, Ravens, mate. Ravens. And Vikings Buccaneers. Ooh, our first slash hard one. Vikings. 
Vikings. I'm gonna go Vikings also. What are you doing? Oh, he's little showing us dirty because of Vikings. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know you had a Buccaneer shirt. No? Uh, Falcons, Panthers. Two so, shit teams. Two shit teams going Panthers. Yeah, uh, I'm purely going to go for Panthers as well because I think the game in London has scarred me. I'm going Falcon <laughs> because they have Bedell Robinson and he is a immense running back. He is a the uh, what is what is the word I'm looking for? Quick fire. Their first round draft pick. Um, I'm writing sure, as well. Sure, I'm, I'm, I'm doing tech writing and all. Um, Are you writing the cops? Commander, Commander Car Cardinals. Uh, commanders. I will also go Commanders. I'm going to go Cardinals. Cardinals oh. is projected to go 0 and 17, the only team to ever do that. I thought yeah. it was 2 and 15. I've only been no, wrong. We once. projected them, but apparently there was a guy that put up. And he says that his his projection for the Cardinals is become the first team to ever go zero and seventeen. Maybe, well, yeah, this this will be the first because every other year has been zero and sixteen. I would assume. Colts Jaguars. Jags. Jags. Yeah, Jags. 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 Steelers. Forty Niners. Forty Niners. I am also going to go Forty Niners. Mm, yeah. Ooh. Saints Titans. Uh, Titans. Yeah, Titans. No, I'm gonna go Saints. Huh? Uh, Broncos Raiders. Uh, I, I apologize, Jeff. Broncos. <laughs> Ooh. Perfect. He's going oh, Raiders. I said he's put his hat on. Are you going Raiders? Right. Who are you going I'm for gonna, then? I'm going Broncos. Oh. Um, Patriots, Eagles. 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 I'm also going to go Eagles. It's been nice to see them win a game, you know. The Eagles are known for two. Since they lost the last game they played in the league. Yeah. Which was the Super Bowl. Um, Shit game, Seahawks, Rams. Fuck you, Hawks all day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say that about the Jets when they get beat by the Bills, mate. Fuck you. Screw you, dude. <laughs> what about you, Rob, Mark, even? Excuse me? Uh, what about um, you, Mark? I think Rams, just despite Rob. Um, I am also going to do what Mark did. Cool. Love that. Uh, uh, Chargers, Dolphins. 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 Oh, I'm going Chargers. Is, is, is two back and healthy? Yeah. yeah. He is indeed. Well, then we got at least one solid game out of him, so Dolphins. Um, yeah, I'm going Chargers because I love Justin Herbert. All um, right, Colin Herb, calm down. Burrs and Packers. Packers. Uh, Mainly because it's Justin Fields does well, I'm going to be kicked in the gonads for my fantasy. Let's go Bears then, because I want him to be kicked in the gonads for his fantasy. <laughs> See, the spite, mate, it just goes around. I want Packers. <laughs> I think the Bears are just overrated. I don't know why anybody thinks that this Bears or no team is going to do well. Jazz Cowboys. That cool badge now, mate. Oh, uh, wow. Jazz. <laughs> oh, wow. This is I a don't tough know. one. Um, Cowboys. See, I was hoping one of you would go, or you would go Giants, means I could go Cowboys. Now you got the pick. So now I have to actually make a decision. And I'm going to go Cowboys. Sorry, the next one's going to be easy, mate. He was always going Cowboys as a Jets fan. He's never going to pick the Giants. I'm going Jets. Oh, yeah. It's in his interest that the Giants win if he wants them both to meet in the Super Bowl. I know, but I pick Cowboys. I don't know why. Neil, I'm going to go with... Uh... The Bills, mate. Of course you are. Just to spite you. Carl Baskins. Who are you going for, Mark? Oh, he's got his other hat on. <laughs> Let's go, Jets! Let's go, Jets! Well, there we go. Now I have a fucking really long graphic to do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's a little bit 
Okay. Hello. Fuck sake, my. But anyway, gentlemen, that was absolutely a stupendous um, episode. I really enjoyed that. Thank you very stupendous. much. Stupendous. What's the accent you're doing? Yeah. Um, it's my posh accent, so I can enunciate. Mate, you're from Belfast. Shut up. <laughs> uh, I'm proud of. Him. Yeah, Robert, let's hear a posh one. No. I don't have posh. I'm Robert. I don't I have posh. Me. Power. Power. <laughs> See, tar. proper enunciation. Tar, tar. Tar. <laughs> tar, tar. Um, right, guys, I will. that's us for another week. Um, we will see you next week where we will have um, Give Us a Shot host, um, Jerm. He will be on with us next week. Um, should be good crack. Um, if you haven't already, check out his podcast. Also, Jeff Reynolds. Reynolds podcast as well the jeff reinhold show check him out and we'll see you later bye, where you say bye <laughs> right bye bye, bye. bye.